This is where I struggle. Okay, this is Love Sween. This is more of a site for the marine biologists. The site's a, an important marrow bed. Little baby scallop. You see all these red twicklet things? This is marrow. It's a calcareous red algae or carline red algae. It's calcium carbonate, I believe. And the growing tips are the white bits at the end. It needs light. To grow, this is a plant, an algae. So it tends to favour clear water, and it must have a current. I think the current's to keep the the sediment off it. As it needs light, it does like turbid water. I wonder what this weed is covering everything. I don't remember this weed from the last time I dived here. That's why Maros is susceptible to anything which disrupts the light. If the marrow gets covered up too much, then it dies. It can't get sunlight. The marrow creates a structure. It allows organisms to live inside it. So basically it's a home for lots of other creatures. Crab there. Starfish. If you watch them for the while, they move quite quickly. Brittle stars. You've got the kind of grey ones, which I think are black serpent brittle stars. And you've got the black ones, I think, are common brittle stars. Dead skull, a oh, crab, it's a shore crab, I think. The marrow is unattached, twiggly things. These kind of hedgehog type. You can see the dead stuff underneath. It obviously can produce quite dense layers. Sedimentary structures build up over time. It's quite a fragile habitat. But you can see lots of life, certainly lots of starfish. The thallus is like chalk, breaks easily. So if a, a dredge came through, it would just Break up and bury it. It would produce a certain amount of turbidity in the water, which blocks out the light. Right, it's just a, a swimming crab and a sand star. Well, 
life model is slightly lighter than dead model. So when the wave action disturbs the sediment, sucks a lighter life model to the top. So it's almost like an evolutionary advantage that if it does get disturbed, it does recover itself to some extent. Certainly studies have shown that when model is dredged, it doesn't really recover. Basically it takes gears. Well, maybe scallop. That's the thing about model, it's a natural ground for lots of species. It tends to favour the centre of the channel here. Both sides are clean, sandy stuff, but less of the marrow. An old oyster shell. I think the tide's changed. Seem to be swimming against it now. This place is notoriously difficult to try and work out the tides for. Usually in the summer there's lots of bootless weed. Which makes progress a bit difficult, but certainly in the winter, it's a lot easier. You see a bit of crabs and stuff running about. Short crab, I think. Sun stuff. Because the tide swapped mid dive. You gotta pay attention but which way you're going. That's C O the C V. Usually get 15 spine sticklebacks associated with it. Oh, there you go. There's baby scallops everywhere. I'll just swim after the light. This is probably one of the few places I've actually seen juvenile scallops. That's why these habitats are important for commercial fisheries. This orange sponge that grows on the seaweed here. Seems to be a feature of the site. It's all over the place. And it seems to like the sea oak. I think that's a, a pipe fish. Quite docile creatures. Back in his yeah. 
Nice. It's such a shallow site that my feet are quite buoyant because the suit's not compressed. That's 35 minutes. There's a little world along here. And there's a platform at the edge. Come and brittle stars, the black ones. Oh, well, there's a snake locks and enemies. Feet are really buoyant now. Oh, there we go. Straight back. That was pure fluke. See if we can get out without falling.